do you have the right proteins in your food storage so that you can stay healthy? Today, food scientist Joseph Bell is going to help us understand the complexities of proteins in our stored foods. And this might just change what you store and the way that you combine foods that you have stored before you feed them to your family. Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Kyleen. And today we are excited to welcome back food scientist Joseph Bell, who is going to talk to us about how we can achieve balance in our diet using the proteins that we find in our food storage. And believe it or not, it's a little bit more complicated than just making sure that you have plenty of wheat or plenty of rice. You've got to put them in combination. And that's what he's going to teach us all about today. So this time we're going to talk about a balanced diet as you get from the proteins. What are proteins? Proteins are long ch chains of hundreds or even thousands of, of amino acids. When proteins are uh, digested, they break down to their constituent amino acids, and therefore the, the amino acids that go into making that protein is what defines the quality of the protein, because we're, our bodies are interested in those amino acids, not in the total protein. Humans and animals, we have a menu of only 20 different amino acids that we're really interested in, that we're using in the body. Of those 20 amino acids, the healthy adult body can manufacture 11 of them whenever they're needed. So they're not a problem. However, the other nine, they've got to come out of your diet. That's why they're called the essential amino acids, because they're essential to a balanced diet. This slide shows you who, what are those nine amino acids. Basically, if only one of those is missing in your diet, protein manufacturing or synthesis stops, no matter how, what the availability is of the uh, other proteins present. There's, in, in a protein, there's no substituting A for B. The, the body doesn't tolerate that. The chemistry doesn't tolerate that. That's why we need all nine of these amino acids so we don't get sick because we will we would get sick otherwise. Just for your information, these are the other 11 non-essential amino acids, which again, the body can synthesize all by itself. So because of that, they're considered non-essential in the diet. If I don't have um, the protein that I need in my diet, what kind of symptoms might I manifest? On a severe basis, the disease is called Kwashiorkor, and that's a fairly severe disease that we're not likely to see in the United States. That's typically seen more in underdeveloped countries. And honestly, with what I'm going to be showing you here a little bit, that's unlikely to happen. But it can happen. It does happen, but mostly in, under, in underdeveloped countries. Because right now we have access to the foods that we need. Right. Kind of we're talking about, okay, if we're just living off food storage and we have limited access... What do we need to do to make sure? Right. So if you've, if you've only got wheat in your food storage, for example, you could get in trouble with this. There's complete co proteins and incomplete proteins. A complete protein is one that has all nine of the essential amino acids, whereas an incomplete protein is lacking one or more of them. An example of an incomplete protein is like uh, gelatin. Gelatin does not have any lysine in it, and lysine is one of the essential amino acids. Whereas like milk and eggs, they are very good proteins with all nine of the amino uh, of the essential amino acids, at least. Not only do they have to be present, but they have to be present in the right ratio. Otherwise, you can have shortages of one, one of those nine or another, and eventually disease could result. But gratefully here in this country, uh, we don't have a lack of protein in general. Proteins that have all nine of these amino acids are called high quality proteins. So animal proteins generally contain all of these nine essential amino acids like beef and fish and pork and poultry, cheese, eggs, and milk. So hence animal proteins are of a higher quality. Therefore, the a small amount of these animal proteins will usually do us. We don't need large quantities, but if you need a small amount of animal protein with a larger amount of a plant protein, it'll help you fill you, fill you up and the two types of proteins can complement each other so that the body acquires the needed nutrition for making more proteins. 
Complementary proteins are, are two or more incomplete proteins that when they're eaten in combination, that is, when they're eaten in the same meal or at least the same day, they can complement each other. Lower quality uh, proteins are supplied by dried, as you can see, dried beans, peas, lentils, and cereal, cereal grains. So consequently, the body needs larger amounts of the lower quality proteins to meet its needs for the essential amino acids. Now, this slide and the next slide talk about combining these food types to, to give you more complete proteins. So an incomplete protein eaten with a small amount of a complete protein can be treated as a complete protein. So milk and cereal, uh, that is whole grain cereal, bread and milk and cheese with either macaroni or noodles or tortillas or bread, chicken and rice, meat and beans or spaghetti and meatballs, tortillas and meat and dried peas, peas and ham. Those combinations will give you again, a complete protein. So I'm looking at these and I'm thinking, this is a lot of what we normally do. Like That's right. just, they're combinations that, that we've been using for years and years as a, as a society. And it's because that's what's going to make the complete protein. That's right. The last one here, combining two different types of incomplete proteins can be treated as a complete protein, like tortillas and beans, peanut butter on a whole wheat bread, or rice combined with peanuts and dried peas or beans. Paragraph at the bottom is the key thing. A good rule of thumb is a complete pro protein can be obtained by combining a whole grain with a nut or a bean. So I think that just in light of this, and we're thinking about our food storage and how a lot of times beans or legumes and grains are easiest to store long-term, right? Right, because they're, so dry, they're dry. Yeah, so if you're just storing the grains, you're going to have problems unless you've got those legumes too, because then you can do the beans and the rice and the tortillas with the beans or or beans in your soup, right? With barley or whatever. So that's one of the reasons why for a one-year supply per person, the recommendation is 400 pounds of grain and 60 pounds of legume. Now in our family, we do more beans than that, a lot more <laughs> beans than that. That would be the reason for that combination, correct? That's right. And there is some flexibility in there in that if somebody can't use wheat, they can probably use rice, but you have to understand that and you have to work around that so that you can have those combinations. If you can't do wheat, then you have a substitute that you can put with beans or peanut butter or peanuts or whatever. Am I, are we getting that right? Yeah, that's right. And I got to say, this little presentation is not intended to get into all the facts and details of the issues. If you want to learn more information about this, type in, in in Google, just type wiki and then whatever topic you're interested in. And some that are is relevant to this is some either essential amino acids or protein quality or protein protein combining, particularly those three proteins in general. They're in, that's interesting, but it's big. If you want to get some more information on this topic, check out these articles. They're fairly substantial. And there's a lot of cross-linking between their articles so that if they give a term that you don't know what the heck they're talking about, it's probably underlined in there somewhere. And it'll take you to another article that talks about that term, whatever it is. It's a great source for understanding things that you don't that you know nothing about. So I think one of the takeaways that we'd like our audience to take away from this video is just that when you are planning your food storage, you need to be able to account to have complete proteins, right? In some way, you've got to be able to have the proteins you need to keep you healthy and strong. Um, if you can do grains and beans, great. If you can't do beans, then you've got to make sure that you're doing something like storing some meat or cheeses or things like that. And quite frankly, freeze dried, both of those work really well. But just make sure that you're taking into consideration what it is that you need to have protein and stay healthy. Right. So plan ahead. Think through it ahead of time while the grocery stores are functional so that you can be ready for those events. This way you can avoid some deficiencies and some diseases, hopefully. Well, we appreciate you clarifying this because I remember back 40 years hearing this thing about complete proteins and everybody had a different opinion and there was all this diversity, you know, and you had to have them right together or it didn't do any good. And this makes a lot of sense and it uh, clarifies it for me. And helps us plan. 
right? Yeah, and I, and I got to say the, the protein combining article talks about this particularly and the essential amino acids also. It was the National Institutes of Health that said, as long as you're, you're eating these combinations, either in the same meal or at least the same day, then they're together nutritionally. So just bear that in mind. Thank you so much, Joe. We really appreciate your time and your brilliance and just sharing all this wonderful knowledge that you have with us. So Glad thank you, have. thank you, thank you. And we can look forward to more videos with Joe so that we can do it right. We just wanna do our food storage right and be ready and be healthy. And so now for the question of the day, what is your favorite protein? Whether it's combined bean and beans and rice or something else, what's your very favorite recipe? I like peanut butter sandwich. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us and thanks for being part of the solution.